after the rise of the Islamic State, during the times of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and in the later periods including the age of Andalusia and the Ottomans, we have considered the oldest historical mosques in more than 12 Arab and European countries. In order to see the landmarks of those time periods and the Islamic conquest that are associated with them and the role that they played in spreading the civilization of Islam which the Arabs are carrying forward with every passing generation. And so, the mosques we cover in this series have many historical stories since they were founded. The mosques in this series have stories that have to be told and cannot be forgotten. Their stories are a living embodiment of the age of Islamic Renaissance. They are part of Islamic history. They are the oldest and most important mosques in the world. Mosques with a vibrant history. With God's permission, they were built to last. Damascus, one of the important historical cities with many architectural sites from almost all eras. Various types of architectural work and art have taken place in this city. During the Mamluk era, many prodigies added brilliant touches to the architectural aspect, casting more diversity and beauty to the city. If we speak of Damascus during the Mamluk era, we discover that the Mamluks were very interested in this city, for they considered it their second capital after Cairo. Hence, we can see their concern for the city, which is shown through their matters of leadership, which at times took place here, and also through the many archaeological sites that still remain to this day. For example, their schools, mosques, and many other relics that are left here. The architecture was prosperous in Damascus, and that is because of the Mamluk style that appeared after a crisis in the area, which was caused by the Mughals. The Mamluks had an important role in shielding Damascus from the attacks of the Mongols, so they established many different fountains there within its historical boundaries. New buildings were being constructed in the western part of the city with stunning architectural work. Also buildings from the Zanki and Ayyubid eras started earlier were also being renovated. These areas lie on the east side of Kasur mountain. This area was later known as al Sahia. Many institutions were founded in this area, while some were educational and others were Islamic, and some were for social gatherings. Later, during the Mamluk era, additional foundations were established. Also, some alterations took place, such as renovations done to Al Jadid Mosque, which is located in Al Sahia. This mosque was built during the late Ayyubid era. However, this mosque does not represent the Mamluk's historic advancements in architecture. In the year 790 after Hijra, a year during the Mamluks rule, Sliman al Ghafri, the Sultan, expanded this mosque using the extra land around it. 
thereby increasing its size. In the year 1387 after Hijra, the mosque was renovated and expanded. In this neighborhood, many of the Mamluk mosques are present but wore away with time or by building new mosques above their ruins. However, more construction took place in the western side of Damascus and also more mosques were built there, especially between Baba al Sahia Cemetery and what is known as Maja Square, which is beside Bada River. A series of Mamluk mosques were built in this area, such as Yabuga, Tenkez, Sanjakda, Al Sabonea, and Torizi. The Mamluks were the first to introduce what is known as urban or modern design. Whatever was built before that was designed by tracing, where they focused on the interior of a building and not the exterior, which was, as they say, built by default and was given no attention. When the Mamluks came along, they started viewing how the mosque would look on the outside according to its surroundings which wasn't done before in Islamic civilization. This area we are in now are lands which were endowed by Asmat al-Din Khatun, wife of Nur al-Din and Salah al-Din. The land was endowed in a Salihiyya. Some of the mosques such as Yubuga were terminated. Others such as Tinkez Mosque lost their Mamluk touches when renovated while many of the mosques kept their Mamluk features despite the many renovation processes that went through, such as Sanjagda Mosque. This mosque lies in the famous Sanjagda district, which is located in between the Maja Square and the eastern gate of the Damascus Citadel. This makes Sanjagda Mosque an important one and one of the Mamluk series of mosques built outside the city borders. We are standing outside the Aragun Shah Mosque, also known as the Sunjuk Dar, which is right outside the historic castle of Damascus. This mosque dates back to the Mamluk era. We are going to go inside and take a look. Sanjak Dar is a Turkish word composed of two terms, Sanjak, which means flag, and Dar, which means the holder. So Sanjak Dar means the holder of the flag. It is said that it is named Sanjak Dar because the mosque contains Abbas bin Madar's tomb, which was the man known to carry the Prophet's flag. Peace and prayers be upon him. Some people claim that the friend of the Prophet, his companion, Abbas bin Murdas, the Prophet's standard bearer, was buried here. It is for this very reason that long ago, people used to carry flags and set them in front of the grave, thinking it was the grave of Abbas bin Murdas, even though it is in fact the tomb of Argun Shah, the person who built this mosque. They used to put up the flags before heading off to Hajj. And as we said, this was not proven historically. This mosque was built in 749 Hijra or in 1348 CE during the reign of Prince Saif al-Din Argun al-Nasri, one of the Mamluk leaders. Argun Shah established this mosque. He is one of the Mamluks who were brought in from China and then sent to the King Muhammad bin Qalawun as a gift. He was promoted on and on until he was assigned the viceroyship of Damascus in 748 after Hijra. 
He had this mosque built in 749 or 750 after Hijra, but he died before the mosque was completed, murdered mysteriously. Aragon Shah became the viceroy of Damascus after Yalbora, who established the famous Yalbora Mosque. The Sanjak Dar Mosque was renovated many times. However, the renovation process wiped away the important Mamluk features. This mosque has been renovated several times. A famous renovation took place in the year 1008 after Hijra. After that renovation, all that was left was the front part, the floor and the minaret. Also, in 1334 after Hijra, the mosque was renovated again. This time the facade was moved to the back to expand into a nearby street. These are the most significant renovations. The mosque has a minaret which was rebuilt during the Ottoman era and that was renovated during the 1400s. During both times, the design of the minaret was changed, so it was not as it was during the Mamluk era. This mosque was also a school during the Mamluk and Ottoman eras. Incredible teachers taught here, such as Al-Burini, Ismail al-Nabilsi, and later on, Abdul Ghani and Nabilsi. Hence, people came to this mosque to learn as well as to worship, and they came from all over. Many other mosques in Damascus followed these programs as well. The combination of a school and a mosque in one place, or vice versa, is a Mamluk idea that is also prevalent in the mosques of Cairo as well as in Damascus. The Sabaniya school is located to the south of Sanjak Dar Mosque and also lies within the old walls of Damascus. This is the Sabaniya school, which is a Mamluk built school that was built to teach the Quran. It is located outside the western gate of a market known as Suq al Nahatin right in front of Bab al-Saghir. This school contains a mosque, usually filled with worshippers. It was called the Sabaniya Mosque because of the person who established it. We are inside the Sabaniya school for the teaching of the Qur'an, which was built during the Mamluk era. It was built by the well-known judge from Damascus, Ahmad al-Bakri al-Shihabi, also known as al-Sabuni. The building of the school commenced in the year 863 after Hijra and ended in 868 after Hijra, so it took them about five years to build it. Al-Sabuni, the founder of the school, passed away in the year 873 after Hijra and was buried here in the al-Sabuniya school. This school or mosque has a huge front of a certain pattern, composed of different colors and bricks. The entrance is larger than the usual Mamluk entrances. Different architectural forms appeared along with all kinds of art during this era, along with improvements to the building of entrances and doors. Also, advancements in statistics took place during this era, and we can say that credit goes to the Mamluks for creating a model of accurate spacing inside a mosque, taking interest in the exterior design of a mosque and urban design, which means designing the exterior of a building according to its surroundings. The Sabaniya School and Mosque is known to be one of the most important historical sites. It's composed of a campus, a yard, 
a square pool, two halls, a southern one and a western one, and these halls were used for educational and religious purposes. The school we mentioned previously was built during the Mamluk era, an era that was known for the great building of schools. This was also stated by Al-Qarqashandi, Al-Nu'aymi, and Al-Umari, and many other scholars and historians of Damascus. Halls and schools or mosques were a concept introduced by previous cultures before Islam, but in a simpler form. The Mamluks, on the other hand, took the concept and used it elsewhere. For example, building a small empty room inside a house the hall would lie next to the yard, or be a part of the yard, or the hall could be independent, but it would have good lighting and a view of the house from the inside. They concluded that this space could be expanded, and they also used it in the construction of many mosques Surrounding the two halls at the school at the moment are rooms not in use. While in the past these rooms would have been used to teach students in particular, teaching them the Quran, these rooms were of great value in Damascus years ago. This school contains ten rooms for teaching, specifically the teaching of the Quran. Also. There is a space at the school for daily prayer and for Friday prayers and sermons. Ala al-Basrawi, an important Islamic scholar from Damascus, taught at the school and gave speeches. The person who endowed the school left strange conditions. First, that the preacher would be of the Shafi'i creed and that the Imam of the mosque be a Hanafi and that along with the Imam of the mosque would be ten men versed in jurisprudence of the same origin. Another condition was that Sahih al-Bukhari be read during Rajab, Shaban and Ramadan. During the Mamluk era, people considered mosque and school as one, using one word for both. They used the halls as extra spaces for prayer and also as a place to teach where religious or scientific lectures were given. The features of a Mamluk mosque are not exclusive to the mosques that they established here, but we also can see the Mamluk touch in the big Bani Omai mosque, where the Mamluk renovated the western minaret known as the Kaitbi Minaret. The Mamluk design is very obvious on the minaret. This minaret was the first to be built or renovated by the Mamluk. And finally, the minaret adds diversity to the mosques in Damascus. Oh,